he told me, well, no, I looked at everything and I realized I'm not interested in any of this because I don't own it. Mm -hmm. But from a ghetto, from Decatur, me, I realized now that I've seen it, I can get it. So that, that kind of boosted me up to like be a little bit smarter, be a little bit more, because I used to not be open to people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But now, like I said, I'm just, you know what, let me get myself, let me just be, like my, uh, like my old boy said, just be like water, just be able to be flexible. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to put yourself, like you said, you want to be a comedian, mm -hmm. you want to be out there, it's okay to be in vulnerable spots, as long as you can get something out of it, as long yeah. as you can get something that takes you to a, a better level so if, if you're if you got to be owned by somebody for a minute as long as you can get that credibility the money the contacts take it yeah you you got to know what you want like i, I tell exactly every, don't you have to know yeah what you, want. you gotta know exactly. what you want out of every situation i tell everybody who's thinking about moving to la know what you want before you get here because once you get here you can get caught up in a mix of every else everything else is going on in this place you know you can get caught up in a mix of not just not just like the party shit that's going on, but you can even get caught in the mix of the tedious day to day activity of making a living in LA because it's so that's fucking true. expensive. I yeah, have, I used to work eighteen hour days for like a, probably a couple of months, and I was like, man, it's not working here, man. I gotta go. So now, mm -hmm. I like I said, like old girl, she said she wanted the artwork right, she wanted the studio right, she was like. I was doing the same thing. I was banking on some studio work, and I realized it's not coming, and I'm just going to end up dying like this. Mm -hmm. So I, what I do, I work two days a week. Everything else I do now, I focus on my freelance jobs, mm -hmm. and I've managed to make some clients. I've managed to, now I know what a bad deal is because I took some shitty jobs. Mm -hmm. I know what a good deal is. I, uh, is the car good? I think so. All right, but yeah, I've, I've just because of that, I've learned how to do uh, invoices. I know how to do contracts now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I learned how to update the website, so my shit's getting better steadily. So, but the thing is, what most people realize or don't realize is how hard it's going to be, mm -hmm. and that's why they they flake out or they make excuses or they dumb themselves down or they say, "I don't want to do that. I just want to stick to that." They not they are afraid of just being in uncomfortable position. Mm -hmm. And especially to be out here where everybody's hungry. Not everybody's smart, but everybody's hungry, which means they're going to be doing some foul shit just to get a dollar. Oh, yeah. So you got to yeah. be aware of that. Yeah. But then if you just put yourself in it and you you treat yourself good, you treat your customers good, don't fuck nobody over, meet your deadlines, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. And I, th I think what the, the, more, the most fucked up thing about people in L.A. and the reason why a lot of people in L.A. don't succeed is because... That hunger blinds them, right? Like, I'm from the south side of Chicago. Mm -hmm. I've been hungry to be rich and respected my entire life. But I've, and for a little bit, I, I can honestly say I was kind of blinded by that hunger. And this is the reason I say a lot of people are also blinded by that hunger. Now I look past it. A lot of people, um, <laughs> it took for me to read a book. The book was called The Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. And then one of the habits was synergy. And basically what synergy was is if you know what you want and I, would, I know what I want, why don't we team up mm. and get it together? And I think that's what fucks up a lot of people in L.A. A lot of people in L.A., they shit on each other or they hate on each other or they try to copy off each other to make sure that their friends or their peers aren't getting ahead of them. Mm. When in all actuality, they can get where they want to go if they just team up with someone who, who else has a vision for themselves. Mm. You know, if you have a vision for something that you want to be, and I have a vision for something that I want to be, why don't we get together and help each other get to wherever we want to go? Most people don't want to do that. Most As a team. Yeah. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, at that part-time job I was telling you about, yeah. like that, I worked with one guy, and he's a writer. He writes scripts. And he actually said, uh, yeah, I'm writing the script. I was like, all right, let's get it done. I'm, uh, I can storyboard it. Like I said, mm -hmm. how I learned how to survive is I took animation because that's what I started in. But then I, instead of getting the jobs, I called it like if animation is a chicken and I'm trying to sell a chicken, mm -hmm. no one's going to buy that chicken because it's going to be too expensive. The only thing that a chicken can do that will make me stay afloat is make eggs. I have to sell the eggs. So everything that makes animation, 
that's what I do. I break it down and I sell that. As the a smaller parts. Right. Yeah. So what I did with him was I was like, yo, let's let's do it, man. Finish writing the script. So I would always push him. I would always push him. I would always push him. And one day he called me, yo, let's go. I finally finished the script. So we met every day for a couple of months. And I had to storyboard the whole script. And uh, now he is done. He just mm-hmm. made the animatic, which is basically all the drawings that I did with the script. Mm-hmm. And now not only does he have a script, he has the storyboards, and now he has an animatic. And he's already in production right now with that. Mm. He found a producer to help uh, fund the thing. So mm. now that's all going. So now I got a person on the team. So me and him are good. But then it's the fact that, yeah, teamwork. Teamwork. So like teamwork. I said, I'm down, man. If you got something, if you got a script, call me, hit me up. Let's oh. do it. I definitely, I definitely be in contact. If you I'll want to make this like contact. a daily thing, just let me know, man. I can just, it's easy. Yeah, I'll definitely be in contact. My my homeboys and I, we we pick one day a week where we all link up and we go through our ideas and we decide what we're going to proceed on and blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. So I'll definitely, you know, link up with you on that one day a week for me. Um, like and I said, I always get my clients together, always yeah. say one or two times a week. That mm-hmm. you have to, that's in my contract. Like, I have to sit with you. Mm-hmm. Either phone call or face to face. Because I don't like doing anything blind. That's a waste of my time. And that's the time I can use to make money. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm down for that. Yeah. So, yeah, teamwork. Teamwork is the only way to get ahead in this time. Right. Teamwork, teamwork, teamwork. And something else I realized too in this town is you got to know what you're good at. You have to know what the fuck you're good at. Just because it sounds good does not mean it's good, right? Know what you're good at. You know, for me, I realized, and when I got here, I was like, you know what? I heard Steve Aoki. So, and and this is the craziest thing that you learned about yourself. You got to think about your why. Like, why is this thing attractive to me? Or why did I listen when someone was telling me something, right? So I hear Steve Aoki made $48 million dollars in 12 months by being a DJ. So I said, you know what? I'm about to be a motherfucking DJ. <laughs> I 